Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of typography in Affinity Photo 2. I've used many of these techniques in previous videos, but sometimes it's good to go through a bunch of them at once. So, let's get started. To begin with, there are several places that amateur designers and photo editors can get free fonts. I use both fontspace.com and dayfont.com, the latter of which I'm going to show you now. Please keep in mind that a lot of these fonts are listed as being for personal use only. I'm going to conduct this tutorial on an image of a chalkboard. I'm hoping I can find a font that looks chalky. So I'll search on the keyword chalk. Then I'll scroll down and see my choices. I think I'll go with chalk about. So I'll click download and then open up the zip file in my downloads folder. There's usually a folder with several options to choose from. Files ending in TTF or OTF are different font types. I'll just double click on this one here and then click install. Disclaimer here, I use a MacBook Pro. This process may work differently on PCs. Feel free to leave a comment if there's a difference. Anyway, now I'll open up Affinity Photo 2 where you can see this chalkboard image I got from pixabay.com. I'll go to my artistic text tool on the left hand keyboard and drag the cursor to set a placeholder. Then I'll go to the font drop down in the top left corner and scroll down until I find chalk about. Okay, let's type in the words. Typography, 101. One of the great things about the artistic text tool is that you can easily change the font size using the corner or side nodes. This looks a bit big, so let's make it smaller by dragging on the corner node. Next, I want to change the font color to white. So I'll highlight the text and then go to the text color box in the top toolbar. I'll use the color wheel slider to change the color from black to white. Now let's go back to the artistic text tool and create another artistic text layer. This time we'll type artistic text. Note that the font and color will default to the last used so this started out in chalk about white. Play around with these little nodes a bit and see what you can do to manipulate the text. You can change the font type at any time by highlighting the text and going to the font drop down. And you can change the size or color of any or all of the letters by highlighting the ones you want to change and picking from either the font drop down or the text color box in the top toolbar. Sometimes you can make changes without highlighting the specific text here. You see, I can just put my cursor between two letters in a word and change the size or color for that word. This may be a little confusing, but you'll get it after a while. When in doubt, highlighting the whole word or words always works. I'll turn this back to white and then we'll move on. The next thing you should know is that you can often use many of the adjustment features, FX, or live filters on artistic text. Here, I'll select the text, go to the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel and add a 3D effects and some outer shadow to my text. All right, I'm going to select the artistic text layer again. This time, we'll work on the text characteristics. To do that, I'll select the character button, which looks like a small A without the underline. You'll see a panel pop up. Sometimes you need to drag the bottom down a bit to reveal all the options. Here, you can apply all kinds of things. There's a decorations section where you can underline, double underline, strike through, and more. or you can use the tools in the transform section to make letters bigger, smaller, wider. There's a couple more drop downs below these, including options, things like superscripts, fractions, exponents, and much more. Go ahead and play with these different options on your own. Okay, here's another cool feature of the artistic text tool. 
If you draw out any shape or curve onto your canvas and then select the artistic tool, you'll see a little A for a cursor. But if you hover that cursor right above the top of the curve, it will change to a little T with a squiggly line under it. Click on the curve and Affinity will place the text right on the curve. You'll see a little green arrow at the beginning of the text and a little red arrow at the end. Go ahead and type on the curve. You can highlight and resize it anytime. Or you can move it around by dragging the arrows. Or you can resize or shape the curve by dragging the nodes. The text will move with it. You can use the characteristics panel that we brought up earlier on this text too. Just click on the little A without the underline at the top to bring up the panel. Moving the baseline position up or down can be especially useful when you need to put the text even higher above the curve, or if you need to place it below the curve. Alright, we're going to move on to the Frame Text tool. It's located in the drop-down along with the Artistic Text tool. The cursor looks like a T in a box. That's because the Frame Text tool is really good at putting text inside of shapes. For example, you can just drag the cursor across the screen to make a box. And then you can paste text in or type away if you want. I'll paste some text in, highlight it, and then change the font by going to the font drop-down on the top left toolbar. If you highlight the text, you can easily add bullet points, outline numbers or right, left or centre, justify the text by clicking on these buttons at the top right. Or you can click the paragraph button which looks like a backward P to get even finer control over your text. I'll play around with these a bit to show you but it's best to do it yourself and get a feel for what you want or need at the time. Just know that you can find it right here. Moving on, I said earlier that the Frame Text tool is good for putting text into shapes. Watch what happens when I drag a circle shape onto my canvas. If I hover the text inside the shape, the cursor turns into T within a pentagon. That means that you can now click to insert text into the shape. Affinity will keep the text bounded by whatever shape you make unless it can't fit any more in. In that case, you can change the shape size or change the font size. You may have noticed that the colour in the circle disappeared. Well, that's true. We can simply draw another shape behind it if you want the colour behind the text. I'll draw out this circle and change it to black clicking on the colour box and changing the colour wheel from white to black. Then I'll just drag the black circle layer under the frame text layer and so, yeah, there you go. Alright, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.